A couple of weeks ago, uh, I shared a card trick from one of my three free ebooks that you can download right here uh, from the YouTube channel. I shared a trick from the books and response was so great, I thought I would do it again. So I'm gonna show you a trick right now. Uh, again, it's just a very unusual trick using a stapler. I love card tricks that uh, aren't just ordinary card tricks, but sort of go that next level with some image or some other additional prop. This is the trick I'm gonna share with you today. Uh, and a reminder again, if you have not already downloaded the three free magic eBooks, I'll put a link down below. Uh, there's tons of tricks, tons of magic insights and tips that'll really help you. There's also a link just on the Sankey Magic YouTube banner, right on the banner. Click the link, you can immediately download the three free magic eBooks. All right. So this trick has virtues, uh, a whole bunch of them, a whole bunch of them. First virtue is shuffle deck, okay? You could do this with a borrowed deck, but it destroys a couple of cards, so that's not great. This is definitely the kind of trick, because a couple of cards are destroyed, and it's very magical, impressive, dramatic for people, because uh, late people keep the same deck forever and they wouldn't want to hurt a card. The fact you destroy a few cards, definitely this is an extra special trick. I would only uh, do it at a particularly special show, all right? Shuffle deck, all right? Um, you're also going to need a stapler and a magic marker, but we'll get to that in a second. First thing you do, now this is, I'm going to tell you, be honest with you guys, this is a practice deck of mine, so there's probably duplicates and stuff in here, but the promise no duplicates are involved in the method. You have someone name a pair of cards, or you take out a pair of cards, okay, and I'm going to go through, and the deck can be shuffled, whatever, let's, uh, I'm going to take out, uh, what do I have here, do I actually literally have duplicates right out of the bat here? Uh, okay, fair enough, a couple of sixes. So you take a couple of sixes. Shuffle deck, spectator can shuffle the deck. Say, I'm gonna harm the two sixes. We're gonna do something very dramatic with the two sixes right now. I'm gonna take them and put a staple right through the back of the cards. Got a stapler, mm. boom. It is not an illusion, boom. The six are stapled together, okay? I'm gonna leave them right up on top. Then the spec you go through, I need you, I need a contrast card from uh, the six. So we're gonna use a card from the middle of the pack, okay? Let's say we're gonna go with, uh, what are we gonna go with here? What's a good contrast card for these guys? Uh, let's go with, uh, sure, we'll go with the three of spades, okay? And then you have a spectator, grab the marker, take the cap off, and they just put their initial on the three of spades, okay? So you've done all this this you do that all right you say next i'm gonna see we got the three of spades in the middle of the pack still they can see it's in the middle with their initial i'm gonna see if maybe uh, our stapled sixes could find your card we know your card is somewhere in the middle of the pack the question is can the sixes maybe find it so here we go watch the sixes see if they're gonna find your signed card somewhere in the middle of the deck watch just like i don't know if you saw that your hands are empty, nothing to see. They see you literally and fairly, I don't do it this way, they see you tear the sixes apart, one six and then the other six on the bottom here, and they see in the middle of the sixes, impossibly, is the signed card. They want to examine, they can see that everything is exactly as it should be. The three impossibly vanish from the middle of the deck and appear between the sixes, even though it was, uh, you can have it uh, selected and signed and all that. So that trick is something I've been doing for a long time in my stand-up shows, my corporate shows. I used to do it a lot actually at trade shows, business trade shows, because it plays so big and it's so dramatic. I'm gonna reveal all the secrets to that trick in just a second. First, I wanna ask the question of the week and we're gonna announce the winners for the Incredible. I know a whole bunch of you wanna know, did I win Incredible from a couple of weeks ago? Uh, first, the grand opening question. Grand opening, just so you know, you can find it at sankeymagic.com. It's a funky little gimmick that looks like a folded playing card, but then you can actually open it up, even though it's a plastic vinyl gimmick. People examine it, and it's this weird folded card thing, okay? They can't possibly unfold it because it's just a piece of plastic cut and sort of printed to look like a folded card. But a moment later, you take it and you impossibly open it up Weirder still, when you open up, it turns out to be the freely selected and signed card. So it's something I've incorporated with my paperclip trick for many years, really strong. Uh, I want you to have a chance to win it. So here is the question for this week. For your chance to win one of the 12 grand opening gimmicks, question is this. What is, forget about, you know, magic words, abracadabra, hocus pocus. For, 
What is the last word, okay, in the world, let's assume it's English, the last word in the world that you'd want to have to use as a magic word? So if someone said, hey, you know what, throughout your show, when you have a magic moment, I want you to use this as a magic word. What's the last word you would want? One proviso to make it a little trickier for people is uh, let's not be super gross or super rude or really offensive, okay? Let's avoid those. So that makes it a little harder. What would be the last word that isn't super gross, super rude, or super offensive that you would want to use? You would ever say, please don't make me use that word. Uh, I'm just thinking right now, for example, one for me might be legume. That's right, the vegetable family, legume. And watch your coin vanish, legume. I wouldn't want that, okay? That's, that's just not very magical. So what would be the last word? Leave a comment down below you'll automatically be entered into the contest to win a grand opening. Okay, in a moment, I'm going to announce the uh, incredible winners. But let's jump in here. This shuffle deck, okay? A couple of simple uh, ideas here, techniques, that are combined to create an, an image. I mean, this is all about serving the final image. The sound of the staples being torn apart, the impossible image of them seeing the sign card in between the other two cards. Try to create that image, that possible image, and leave that. Like I said, I used to do this a lot of trade shows. And at trade shows, you get a crowd gathered around. You do, you want to do something big that everyone can see, boom, boom, boom. Then you drop it on, maybe you have a little table at the trade show in the booth, and then people can pick it up and they're looking at it like it's a holy relic, right? Okay, so what's our technique? First, shuffle deck, like I said, which is great. Shuffle deck of cards. Second, grab a pair of cards. They can name them if you got a full deck. I often don't have a full deck. Uh, what I got here, I got a... Do I even have the red fours? I, I, I don't even have the red fours. So let's do a black four, red four, whatever. I just like the pair. You got a pair of cards. Now, you say I'm gonna take the pair of cards and I'm gonna staple them and you very fairly, okay? You got the staple here. They see you take them and they see you staple them together. Now, that is about as visually convincing as you can get. Obviously, it's super fair, but it's not fair. You cheated because what I did is I got another card stapled to the backs, okay? Now the other card is a four in this case, so let's try not to get confused. But what do I have then? I have right now, I've got two cards, okay, that are running face uh, faces one way and one card uh, back towards me, all right? And this is how I did it. I went through, grabbed, uh, let's grab a pair here this time. We'll grab, uh, what do we got? A King of Hearts and King of Diamonds, okay? And what's gonna be a good contrast card? Two of Spades, okay. So I showed the two cards, I put them on top of the deck, squared them, and I picked up the face down card below them. Okay, I got a break there. I picked all three up and I turned them towards the audience, okay? Towards the audience. The back view is this, right? I'm like this, and with my left thumb, I very firmly, you want a lot of pressure here, hold it like that, that's what you want, okay? Then I brought the staple over. Now this is a big honking sta stapler. You'll find ones that are about a third this size, okay? You can order them online or whatever, third this size. And what they're gonna allow you to do is A, you don't have to carry it around that looks like, I don't know what you got carrying around there. But B, uh, you wanna be able to ideally staple dead center of the cards, okay? But with this big thing, it's actually pretty hard for me to get dead center. Let's assume I'm gonna keep the cards nice and square like this. Lots of pressure there. You bring the stapler over and you staple, okay? So dead center there like that. That's actually pretty good, okay? So you staple, then you put the stapler away and boom. Now already the trick is so much more theatrical and magical because you brought this stapler in, you staple two cards together. You got this whole Vegas vibe going on, which I love. And in throwing it in the air, it's a very natural way to say everything's copacetic, but you've got one staple there, right? So. That's there. Next I say we're gonna use a card from somewhere in the middle of the pack. I don't force it, I just have someone initial the card. Sometimes I'll say, let's look for a card that's a big contrast from a, a face card, all right? I have the pack of cards, I turn the deck over like this and I spread through looking for the card. Very fair, but I did another secret move, okay? I just did the old turnover pass, which really flows beautifully. Here's the turnover pass exposed. I'm gonna turn over it looks like you're turning the deck face up. What you actually do is roll the bottom half and as soon as it clears, as soon as that clears, you lower that like that, okay? So it looks like I've just taken the deck and turned it 
over. That's the large action, which gives plenty of cover, okay? You're just turning over the pack. But the, you're actually doing the roll within the larger action. So what that does is it takes your stapled three cards and centers them as you can immediately spread through. Now I can feel when I'm coming up to the stapled card, okay? And I remember what it is too. So I spread through and as soon as I come to it, okay? As soon as I get to my two, I put my thumb over the staple like that. Separate the cards. I lean in towards the spectator. Would you just put your initial there? Now here I don't have a spectator. So it is a bit awkward, of course. I, I put down half the pack. I take the cap off. I have to cover the, this, and they put their initial like that, okay? But if it's just a spectator who already has the marker, then it's simply me, to, uh, I'm simply in this position. Because obviously, you don't want to have to, the longer you hold your thumb in that position, they might pick up on something awkward. They might, right? But if you're just separating here, leaning in, give your initial, just on the corner there, and I gesture, just on the corner there for me. Thank you so much. And then I close the cards back up. So it shouldn't take more than a few seconds, right? Before we go any further, and I reveal the, uh, really, it took me forever to figure out the tear sequence, as simple as it is. Before we go any further, let me announce the winners. Last week, or the week before me, winners of Incredibil. Uh, check, definitely check out the Incredibil preview at the Sankey Magic site. Incredibil, you fold a bill, uh, crazy card changes, dollar bill changes, all with just a bill. It's really cool. Anyway, winners are J.S. Gilbert, you won. Brian Morrison, Warner Boys with a Z, Joe Brundich, Kyle Lyons, or Leon Lyons, Ivan Godina, God, God, Godina, Ivan Godina, Tim Ernest, Andy McIntosh, Bro Lou Haffey, you won, bro, Bro Lou Haffey, Michael Terza, Terza, I hope, sorry, Michael Terza, Marshall Bates, and Doug Martin. As always, if I just said your name, congratulations. Send an email to my team at contact at sankeymagic.com. Let them know your real name. Let them know your YouTube name and your shipping address and say, hey, I just want an incredible bill and they'll ship it out to you. All right, without further ado, let's fi finish this very cool trick here. Uh, so where we were, they just put their initials. You got your thumb over the staple. Um, I, and I've got these, as I gather these cards up and put them back on top, okay, and then square everything up. I just controlled the three staple cards back to the top with a cull, okay? You could do a dead cut, but it's much better as a cull because you want to leave the impression that your stapled kings, you put them on top of the deck, right? This is the effect you want. You turn the cards over, you spread through to a card, they put their initial on it, you closed up the deck, turned everything over, and took these off. So their initial card is here and kings here. But thanks to the turnover pass and then the cull, and let me show you the cull. You actually control everything the whole time. So the cull, just to be clear here, is as these cards are put back together and I square things up, my right fingers slide the kings to my right, then push all the other cards below it and square up. All right. Performance looks very smooth, casual. There's the initial card, great things like that. And I say, let's see if maybe the two kings I wonder if they could possibly go through, and I'm immediately isolating these two, two different spheres of focus. I wonder if maybe, and I'm flicking this, and you know, you almost want to suggest that you're looking for their sign card, as long as they think the sign card's somewhere here. And you're like, I wonder if they can find it. Now to finish, you do uh, any old little, you can wave these magically like this, you could take this and tap it like that, you can give a shake here while you snap this, kind of like that, sort of watch, let's see if they can, if I can maybe invisibly throw your marked card, you give that, maybe, probably not simultaneously. Maybe you could uh, you do that delay thing, that goofy delay thing where you go up and then down like that, whatever, okay? So clean. And again, you can do this casual throw. So here's the situation. You've got, they just saw the card there, but it's actually here and stapled. So for the final cool moments is you get a break under the top card with your thumb, okay? I am going to tear that. Uh, off and forward, okay? As I do it, remember the half pass action where you turned over? You're gonna do the exact same thing under the large action of this being snapped forward. You're gonna do the smaller action of that. You combine these two and it looks exactly like that card was just below that card, but you actually turn these over. 
You're going to do the same thing again, okay? Then you push this back down. They can see the signature, really selling the visuals or selling everything. Get a break again between the bottom card and the middle card. And this time again, forward, turning over, and you finish exactly how you want, okay? Still a staple in one of the cards, the middle card. So the staple's here in the signed card. Uh, you've got the two kings here, and you hand that out, okay? Uh, I shared this online a few years ago here on the channel, but I never liked the demonstration of it. The, I thought the uh, explanation was a bit awkward, so I, I got rid of it. I wanted to bring this back for a long time. And like I said, this is one of the many tricks I share on my three free ebooks. So click that link down below and make sure you download these three. Tons of tricks. I want to make sure you guys know the quality of the tricks is really high. Sometimes when people do a free, uh, like a free ebook, it's sort of like really just trying to get you to go off to, to buy something. These is not the case at all. These three free magic ebooks are really high quality. Don't forget to also leave a comment down below. I want you to have a chance to win grand opening, that funky trick. Uh, based on my paperclip trick. Grand opening, leave a comment and tell me what would be one of the last words in the English language, without being offensive or rude, please. Leave a comment, let me know what would be one of the last words you'd ever wanna to have to use in your show as a magic word, okay? Leave a comment down below. That's it, thank you as always for watching. Uh, the world, huh? Opening up slowly but surely. Uh, so I'm so excited. I cannot wait to get back to live performance. I've had a lot of fun on Zoom. It's been great doing a lot of stuff virtually and even at distance, and, you know, in people's homes and lawns and this kind of stuff. Done a bit of this as well. However, I cannot wait. Nothing beats, particularly for magic, nothing beats live performance. Particularly since so much of my magic I teach here happens in people's hands. Some of my favorite stuff. Okay. Congratulations to all of us for hanging uh, so tough for so long. Thank you for being a loyal subscriber to this channel. And if you haven't subscribed, what are you doing? Click the subscribe. And please, as always, smash that like button. Hit that like button. Push that like button. Like that like button.